would like to find the surface area of this piece of clay that's being made for a sculpture. Notice it's not any nice predictable shape, um, but we do want to know the exact area if possible. The piece of clay that we're using for our sculpture was modeled using this fourth degree polynomial. So here's the curve from x equals 0 to x equals 11. We could start by estimating the area by cutting it into shapes that we're familiar with. And what's the most familiar shape in terms of finding area is a rectangle. Rectangles are probably the most straightforward shape to find its area. The area of a rectangle is length times width. And so if I had a rectangle, such as this rectangle right here, its area is one for the width, four for the length, so its area is four square inches. So this little rectangle is estimating the area of that part of our shape. When we were using one inch rectangles to estimate the area of our piece of clay, we were using the right side of the rectangles to get the length of the rectangles. So for example, the first rectangle went from 0 to 1. We plugged 1 into the fourth degree polynomial to get the height of 4 for the rectangle. If we continue to lay rectangles that have length equal to the length of the curve, you could see that we would start to get an estimate of the overall area. Okay, so I've sliced the shape into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rectangles. And each rectangle is one inch wide, and their heights vary according to the value of the curve. And so this length is 4, this length is 5, this length is 6, both of these were 7, this length is 6, this length is 5, this length is 4, this length is 3, this length was 2 and a half, and this length is also 3. So if I found the area of each rectangle and added them, I would get an estimate of the area of my shape. If you add 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 and a half plus 3, you get an estimated area of 52.5. So the area of my original shape of clay is 52.5 square inches. So we can see that the rectangles that our one inch rectangles that we had are not fitting the curve exactly but again if we were just trying to estimate the area over here the rectangles were overestimating the area a little bit but over here they're underestimating the area a little bit so they're kind of evens out here there's an underestimate here there's an overestimate so our estimate of 52.5 is probably pretty close however if we wanted to get an even better estimate we could use skinnier rectangles. For example, we could use one half inch rectangles instead of one inch rectangles. And we would need 22 of them. So the first one would divide our section about right here, and then there would be the second one. The next rectangle would be here and we're now skipping by a half starting from zero to a half so one half gets plugged into the polynomial that gives us the height of the first rectangle then from one half to one is the second rectangle and so eventually for all 22 rectangles we're plugging in 22 values of x into this polynomial to actually get the lengths of the rectangles that we used to estimate the area. 
But notice as I'm using the one half inch rectangles, the overestimates are not as dramatic. Like now I've got a, a small overestimate instead of the big overestimate that we had when we were using the one inch rectangles. And if we continue along, we can see that our half inch rectangles are fitting our curve much more tightly and the sum of these 22 half inch rectangles would be much closer than the sum of the 11 one inch rectangles. We could continue to improve our accuracy by making our rectangles skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. So I could now make quarter inch rectangles, for example, by making these half inch rectangles half of what they were. And notice that as I make the rectangle skinnier, I'm more accurately patterning the height to go with the, with the function. And we could continue to just make skinnier and skinnier rectangles. As you can see, the skinnier you make them, the closer you're fitting the curve, the more of them you have. And the sum, despite the fact you have more rectangles to add, the sum that you get is going to be more and more close to what the true area is. And as you made your rectangle skinnier and skinnier, you would just keep doing the same thing. It's just you have much many more x values to plug into your polynomial. If I do find the true area of this shape, it turns out it is 53.478 square inches.